Hi guys and welcome back to Rich Reviews and welcome back to the 458 Spider. Today we're going to do an installation, configuration and actual review of a unit that's provided by a company called Mods for Cars and the unit is called Smart Top. So in association with the manufacturers of the Smart Top unit, Mods for Cars, I've negotiated a cool discount deal for the subscribers of my channel. Keep watching the video and I'll drop the discount code a little bit later on in the video for you. So what does this unit do? What it does um, predominantly for the 458 is allows you um, to configure the unit so you can drive the car and put the top up at the same time. So in effect, it enables you to put the top up while you're actually driving the car forward. Full disclosure, I've been provisioned a unit for the review and I'm allowed to keep the unit. So I'm being paid not financially by direct cash, but I'm actually being paid by actually having been given the, the unit. Um, for free. So the video is going to be broken down, down into multiple stages. The first stage of the review is going to be the configuration of the unit because you actually configure the unit before you install it to the car or it's best to configure the unit before you install it to the car and you configure it by connecting it to your laptop. So first of all as I say we're going to deal with the actual configuration of the unit. Secondly we're going to deal with the installation of the unit to the actual car and then thirdly we're going to do a review showing you the different operations and the different capability and obviously doing a review of uh, actually how the item performs and my perception of the installation and the configuration and the actual operation of the unit. So now we're going to cut to the actual update and configuration of the unit. The standard default configuration for the 458 Spider is that you cannot operate the roof and, unless the car is stationary. Now this unit provides extra functionality for the automated roof operation on the 458 Spider in the manner it enables you to configure extra operations that you can perform. One of the key operations is the ability to be able to set the set the unit up so as you can operate the roof while the car is in motion. Now you can configure the speeds that this is allowed for so you can you can configure the speeds that this is enabled for um, up to circa um, sort of 25 miles an hour I think it is um, but uh, you can also configure it so it's at zero. Now this is this differs from the point of view of the, the latter model the 488 and the and the and the subsequent model after the 488 the F8. The F8 and the 488 both allow you to operate the roof I believe up to around 28 miles an hour. The roof mechanism is perceived to be exactly the same so there's no reason really why you shouldn't be able to operate the roof while the car's moving up to the same speeds as the 488 for example. Now I don't know for sure that the roof operation that the roof mechanism is exactly the same but from from the research I've performed and from the people I've spoken with I believe the roof mechanism in, is, is in effect the same. Obviously you've got to make sure there's certain caveats you've got to make sure you're operating the roof on a flat on a flat road no no pits etc etc because as a spider there would be certain amounts of flex and um, I also have to add the caveat that I'm not saying that it's okay for you to actually configure this module to, to operate the roof in this way. It's up to your, you know, it's your own, your own risk and, and mod for cars detail this as well. Um, but there's been, they've had no issues from anybody um, that's caused damage to the roof by in installing this module and operating it within the configured settings. Now there's other operations that you, you can configure this unit for as well. And this is the actual unit. There's other operations you can configure this unit for as well. Um, those operations um, include um, such things as setting up a valet mode so you can't operate the roof at all. So if the car's being parked by a third party, um, the roof cannot be operated at all while the car's moving. In fact, I don't think it can be oper operated at all if you set this mode. <clears throat> In addition, you can also set certain configured modes whereby um, it's, you have what's called one touch operation and what that one touch operation means is that um, you press the button once on the console in the car and it automatically opens the roof and you press it once and it closes the roof so you don't actually have to hold the button to do those operations now if you hold the button for more than a certain amount of time i believe it's more than two seconds then it goes into the standard operative mode where you have to hold the button to open and close the roof. So first thing you need to do is you need to unwrap the unit and you need to take out the actual USB cable that's provided with the unit and we need to do a firmware update and that also we need to configure the unit for the operations that you want to that you want the unit to be able to perform. So if you connect the small USB cable into the actual unit and you then plug it into your laptop, I'm using a MacBook Pro here, 
then the data light should be displayed on the unit. Now this shows that there's a, a valid connection to the unit and it's reading and writing to the unit correctly or it's capable of reading and writing to the unit correctly. Following connecting the unit to your laptop, um, if you're using a Windows device, probably you'll have to wait for USB drivers to be installed for the smart top device. Um, once that's occurred, then you need to download the M4 Connect app. Now the, the, the M4 Connect app actually provides you the capability to update the firmware on the smart top unit and allows you to configure the unit with the different operations you'd like it to perform. Now once you actually open the app, you'll see it actually shows you the status of the smart top unit. It shows you the, soft, the version of the software that's installed and the actual configured settings, i.e. state, of the actual unit in itself. And it's got there, as you can see, upgradable and configurable, yes. So this unit is upgradable and configurable. And if you ever want to reread the information from the unit, then you can click the refresh button up here. And that in effect makes a request to the unit, to the, to the firmware on the unit to actually reread the state of the unit. And it shows it and displays it on the screen. Now, when we want to upgrade the firmware, first of all, you want to upgrade the firmware or you want to check that the firmware is at its latest version. So you click the firmware option and then you click the check for update. Now it's important that you have your laptop connected to the internet. I'm actually connected by Wi-Fi to my internet connection here. Um, obviously you can be connected via cable, etc. There's not a lot of data that's going to and from the actual Mods for Cars website, but to be able to check that it's the right firmware, it needs to actually corroborate the actual version of software, the version of firmware that's on the smart top unit with the version, with the latest version that's available for that particular version of the unit. Now, once you've checked for, once you've clicked the button check for update, you actually see it does a check for update. Mine's up to date. It doesn't need to be updating. But if you did need to update it, then you'd actually just have to go through the various different um, requests and stages that it details in the actual operating manual that's provisioned for the smart top unit on the cars for on the model for cars website, and go through the information that's just displayed on the screen to actually um, update the actual firmware on the unit. Now, following update the firmware on the unit, you then have to configure the unit with the different operations that you'd like it to perform. Now, for this, you actually go into the settings section of the, of the application. Now, SmartTop have designed this interface, uh, SmartTop have designed this screen so that it actually shows, by way of a matrix grid, the different operations that are available um, and how they're configured for this particular unit. Now, you see it will say function one, down to and through to function six. And it doesn't give you a specific name of what those functions do. That's because mods for cars are co continually updating the functionality of these units. And rather than having the actual details out of date in um, that's put in the application, and um, what they do is they actually give you the ability to see what the different functions are by looking at your actual product manual, but for, the, for actually explicit details, and to actually view a settings matrix from the actual website. So you pull the settings matrix by clicking the setting, settings matrix button in the bottom right hand side of this screen. And what that does then is it brings up the settings matrix and it actually shows you here what the actual configuration of each function is. So we can see here that function one is actual the module mode master switch. Now this is actually setting it to the different operations that you want to perform. Um, here we've got it set to one. So this is actually the actual operation of the unit switched on. If you have it set here to zero, then if you have this to on in setting zero, then what that means is that the actual item will not function. In effect, you're switching the unit off and it's just, it's just a pass through. It's just pass through. And you do that if you want, if you need to do some debugging, um, which you shouldn't have to do because the unit should be operating no issues. But if you do get problems, then you can actually switch it off and you can check that the, the roof is still operating correctly. So you've got a default, deep sort of very, so you've got various debug operations or de various debug states and that you configure this unit into. Now, if we go back into the mod for connect, the M4 connect, App, you can see here how this tallies with the actual grid that's read from the actual device. Say so this is actually read, so this is the actual states on your smart top device. This is the actual website grid that actually shows you what the operations are. So it's, it's good if you can actually run the application by the side of the actual grid from their website to show and to make it easier to understand what you're actually configuring. 
If you want to change the state of a function, then you literally just click in the box and it changes it like so. And then when you want to write the new change to the actual unit, because it doesn't automatically write it, that's just making the change or, or setting the change in the app, then what it does when you click write to module up here on the right hand side, what that will do is that will actually write that change to the smart top device, to the smart top unit. So you will then have made the change to the smart top unit, but you can then change it back again. So if we just go through to uh, one of these operations, just an example, you can actually, all the, all the operations are configured in a similar manner, but by default, um, you know, the operation to be able to move at a certain speed when you're operating the roof is set to zero, this state. Now what this by default, this state means that the actual car roof, it means that the actual roof cannot be operated unless the vehicle is stationary. That's the default state. Now if you want to change it to one of these various states, then you just click as, I've, as I'm showing you there. And what these relate to, if you look on here, on the actual reference grid, it actually relates to the maximum speed that you can operate the car and operate the roof at the same time. So you've got up to 25 miles per hour, which is 40 clicks, 30 clicks, 20 clicks, 10 clicks, zero clicks, obviously zero meaning that you have to be stationary. So if we change this operation, I've got it set to seven miles per hour at the moment, but actually I want it set to a circa 19 miles per hour, which is 30 clicks. So I'm gonna change this now, function three, I'm gonna set it to to setting three, so it'll operate at 19 miles per hour there. So that will now set the module up so that I can, I can operate the roof up to, with the car moving up to 19 miles per hour, the roof will operate. So I can open and close the roof up to those speeds. And then to make the change, as I said, I then click the right to module button and it actually updates the module and writes that change to the actual smart top firmware. So that is then locked in. I would recommend following, making all your changes to the actual configuration. I don't think you actually shouldn't be making too many changes to, uh, um, to be honest as well, because there aren't that many changes that you need to do. Um, I would then recommend that after you've written to the module to write all your changes, you then corroborate that it's taken those changes by actually then doing a read from the module. And you should find that it actually doesn't make a change on the application. That because in effect, it's, it's reading from the module and confirming and validating that the configuration settings you have set are correct and are valid and that it has taken those configuration settings. Following actually configuring the unit, you're pretty much then ready to go. You can close down the application. You can close down the application and then you're good to go, really. You're good to move forward. Um, you, can close down the you can close down the application once you've um, configured the firmware. Once you've configured the settings and, conf and updated the firmware or check for the, that if the firmware needs to be updated, you're then good to go. You can actually install the, the smart top unit. So the next stage of this video will be the actual installation of the unit with the final stage of the video being the actual review of the unit um, showing the operations of the unit and um, how it functions. So now we're going to actually deal with the installation of the unit. Now, first things first, even though it doesn't say in the manual, and I'm sure there won't be any problems with regards to damaging the unit or damaging the car, safety precautions, I always disconnect the battery first whenever I perform any installation. So when I installed the webcam, disconnect the battery first. There's many ECUs on these supercars and the last thing you want to do is fry an ECU. And again, I'm not saying that making the connection changes will fry an ECU. I'm absolutely sure it won't, but there's no harm in failing safe and being careful about these things. So first of all, disconnect the battery. Now I'm very fortunate with my car. Um, the battery is actually in the footwell, easy to get to. And because this car has been configured with start stop, yep, a Ferrari configured with start stop, go figure. How much fuel are you gonna save, eh? These things do about 18 to the gallon at best. Um, but because it's configured with start stop, I've actually got a separate earth post, which you'll see, um, it, which you'll see shortly. And I can actually disconnect the battery by just unclipping a, um, a post off the earth and then lifting that, that connection up. So it's actually very easy to disconnect the battery on this car. So first of all, there's a little, there's a little screw thread that you undo. It's actually got a plastic head on it. So you can undo it by hand, which enables you to take the little unit out. And then from there, you can actually pull the plug out. And as you can see here, 
you've just got, because it's got start stop, it's only cars with 458s with start stop that are configured in this way. And you have to have this actual earth post here. And to actually disconnect the battery, I just have to do that and then shuffle this off and pull it forward. That's it, battery disconnected. And as you can hear from the webcam, <laughs> as you can hear from the dash cam, it says powering down because it's disconnected now all the mains to the car. Having disconnected the battery, we're now around on the driver's side. Um, I've moved the car seat forward just to enable space because the actual mod, mod, uh, the actual smart top unit is going to be fitted here. It's actually going to be fitted around here. So we actually have to lift up this trim, the, the weather seal trim, and we have to undo a little screw around here and then we have to lift out this trim panel and then we gain access to the actual um, module that is used to control the automated top and we fit the the smart top unit in line with the pre-existing module so it actually changes some of the functionality obviously it changes the actual signals depending on how you've configured the smart top unit so first of all this is just an overlap set of trim so we pull out the weather strip trim, being careful how you pull it out. This is very expensive. I believe this is around a thousand pounds for a new one of these. So the last thing you want to do is damage it. As you can see here, there's the torque screw that we need to undo. Now this unit also latches in further up here in different sections. So you have to make sure that when you undo this torque screw, you don't actually fully remove the torque screw. You loosen it so you can then slide this lift it and slightly slide it forwards and that should release this unit. Now I'm saying that I've never done it before so this is a first for me as well. So here we've just got a torque screw fitted in with a screwdriver and I'm just loosening off the screw. Now you just need to as you can see the screws just lifting up. Now you must make sure that you don't drop this is magnetized this but you don't want to drop any any head units of the screw any, any of the torque driver bits down into here because then you'll be <laughs> lifting up half the carpet trim to try and gain access to them so you have to be careful with how you actually remove this screw now as you can see that's already partly actually lifted up i haven't done anything to it i've just loosened the screw off now you have to then carefully ease ease this unit down as you can see there it's unclipped and I've moved it, I've lifted the seat forward as well so I don't damage the seat. There you go. Now we've still got the speaker connected here so we don't want to disconnect this fully. There's no point in actually disconnecting these cables. What we'll do is we just put it to one side so we can install the smart top unit. You've got these hooks that actually hook into the top of the unit and latch down. So you have to make sure you scoop the unit in first of all, and then you push it down and latch it onto the screw that held it in place below. This is actually the module. This unit is actually the module that controls the actual movement of the hard top. So this is the unit we have to actually connect the smart top unit interface with. So I'm actually referencing the Mods for Cars smart top manual on my laptop. I did print it out, but the trouble with printouts is it doesn't show, well, the trouble with black and white laser printouts is it doesn't show the colored plugs. And obviously you need to know which are the colored plugs to actually disconnect the unit and to plug the new unit in. So um, for those people who are wondering how I'm finding all this information and checking it out, the documentation is very good and I'm just referencing the smart top mods for cars documentation on my laptop as I go through the actual process of installation. So the second grey plug down you disconnect so you have to just there's a little catch there little plastic catch so you push that you push that catch forwards and then you lever out the plug comes out very very easily very easily indeed and then the bottom one the green one obviously you can tell because it's green whereas the other ones are all grey the same thing just push in the latch, you can hear it actually click there, and then you just pull out the plug, there you go. Could not be easier. You plug in the wiring harness for the smart top into those existing sockets as a first stage. So this is the smart top wiring harness. So what you're looking for first of all is this plug, it's a, it's a male plug, and uh, sorry, it's a female plug, and this female plug. Those two connect into the existing 458 hardtop module. So fairly straightforward. Again, 
same it's the same plug as this type so you're just looking for the same matching plug that you've removed out pull that one slightly to one side and take this unit and plug it in in its place now you should be listening for a click there you need that click because it confirms that the actual plug is fully home is fully connected and just give it a nice little push in just to make absolutely sure and then here this is the previous plug from the from the existing 458 wiring harness move that to one side and then we'll plug this one in in its place from the smart top wiring harness and again listen for the click there you go nice and secure just make sure it's nice and secure in there without going without pushing too hard being careful you don't damage anything never a bad idea while you're here to just make sure all the other plugs are pushed home fully without damaging any of the leads don't push on top of the wires because that way you might damage the wires so push the actual plugs to make sure they're fully home in the actual unit just in case they've worked loose in the years that the car has has been in existence so i'm just checking here and pushing all the other plugs firmly in just to make sure and then we're ready to fit the smart top unit now following the installation of the wiring harness into the pre-existing 458 hardtop unit you then need to mate or interface that wiring harness with the pre-existing 458 wiring harness remember we removed those plugs from the pre-existing 458 hardtop control unit or automated hardtop control unit i should say so what we need to do now this is the previous 458 wiring loom this is the smart top wiring loom what we need to do is now connect them together so green to green very simple same latch mechanism nice and tight nice click again so you know it's gone home it's latched so that's not going to come out nice and tight very nice connections these so you can feel that they're really secure this actually goes to the smart top unit we're going to be connecting that in a minute and we'll connect in the other connector so here again this is the pre-existing 458 wiring harness connector this is the smart top wiring harness coming now from the hardtop unit connect the two together nice click again nice and tight gives you confidence that the connectors are really securely plugged together now all we need to do now is actually connect the smart top unit now i've got the smart top unit here i wanted to show you there i actually had it in my back pocket nice and small very small unit nicely easy to configure all you've got to do is plug the the smart top wiring harness now the plug into this into this unit it's actually a socket actually because this is a plug if you look at the actual um, items in there now before you do that i think i've got it in my other back pocket Motor for cars provide you with a usb cable to update the smart top unit and to change the operations of it now Mods for Cars might be providing additional firmware updates for this unit in the future. The main reason um, that you're likely to actually need that port again is that there might be new functionality that Mods for Cars provide in the firmware. Wouldn't that be cool? You know, they, they may give you for free some new capability and some new operations that you can perform. Now, to be able to enable it so you can update this easily, um, this is the cable they provide for updating the unit for updating the firmware and, and and selecting the operations you want to be performed in other words configuring the unit they recommend you actually leaving the cable configured and installed to the unit and actually when you've fitted the unit in to actually leave the cable just hanging out so that it's actually just hanging out above the carpet so that you can then connect your laptop again if you need to in the future to update the firmware if there's a firmware update nice and simple so now we're going to actually connect the unit to the smart top unit to the actual wiring harness and this will actually provide the full-blown connectivity this will only mate one way as we can see there this plug selector latches into this top part so that part of the plug needs to be at the top referencing that hole we can see there nice securely plug the unit in and that's it that's the unit configured now before you do anything else you just want to check the cabling on that before we do anything else reconnect the battery 
because we, in effect, the installation is done. That's it. It's that simple. How long has that taken me? 10 minutes? And that's from undoing everything. Now, yeah, it'll take me about 10, 15 minutes to put everything back. But what you need to do is actually check that the roof does operate and that there's no issues. So the first thing you do is reconnect the battery. Now you've done all the actual cabling parts, reconnect the battery and then see if the, see if the system operates correctly. So here I'm just literally putting the connector back on securely on the post. You'll hear my webcam fire back up in a minute. The woman on, on the webcam will tell me that the webcam is booting back up. I'll actually leave the plug out just for now until I've actually installed the trim piece back in again. And you leave it for a few minutes for the car to restart and for the firmware and the system in effect to re reinitialize itself. So let's do the first try and we're gonna try and close it. And one of the functions of this is that you actually just have to do a one touch on the actual closing button, whereas previously you had to hold it. So I should now just have to just press the close button on the hood once and it should automatically close it. I'll have the ignition in how I've configured it. So ignition on, then one touch. There you go. That's called the one touch operation. In effect, it enables you to just have to press the button once, either way to either close it or open it. Now there are certain safety features with regards to this operation. If I was to press the button again in some way, shape or form, um, it would stop the operation. And if I was to hold the button for more than I think it's a second, then the actual operation would be as per normal that you'd have to hold the button, uh, whether that's been trying to open the roof or trying to close the roof. So now we've validated that the system is operational, that there's no issues. What we need to do is put the side panel back on. This should be a straight reversal of the removal procedure, but we have to be careful. We don't want to damage anything. <coughs> I've also, um, if you look at where I fitted the unit, I've Velcroed the unit in slightly on the actual control unit here, slight bit of Velcro that they provide with the smart top unit. And it's actually wedged in behind this silver panel. So it's nice and tight in there. It's not going to move. And I've folded the wires in the, the harness in, obviously making sure you don't damage any cabling. So it's nicely, nicely slotted in there. And I've got the Point USB out. cable. This is the smart top unit here. And I've got the USB cable running down along here and through here. So as I can connect the laptop to the, to the car here, if I need to update the firmware and I can just tuck that away nicely. It won't cause an issue underneath there like so. So I'll just need to put this piece of side trim back and then we're all done. So we're just putting the finishing touches on now. We've located the trim back in. It is a bit of a bugger. What you need to make sure is that when you locate the top part here, this, there's a locator, there's a hook. It needs to hook in properly into the top within the, there's a, there's a, a metal strip there that it needs to hook into. You'll see it when you, when you take the, the um, trim out. And you need to make sure that it's fully located. There's some metal plates here. You need to make sure that the metal plate on this trim, trim part goes behind the metal plate that's there to locate it. And that tucks it in, pulls it in all nicely and back in. And obviously you want to make sure in all you're doing that, when you're pushing it up and making it tight, that you're not damaging the lever. Now, this is our torque head screw. Again, remembering not to drop the torque head down into the carpeted area, but making sure that we locate the actual unit down here. It's not the thinnest of, um, of torque screwdrivers, this. So just nip it up a bit, first of all, and then add some pressure and nip it up fairly tightly again making sure that you're not leaving the part whoops in there and what I'm going to do is get a pair of snipe nose pliers and pull that out. It's just now left to put the weather strip back in. Now make sure, again, being very careful that you locate it properly. And as you go along, just knock it into place. So it's nicely 
sealed so you're taking up the slack down this area and pull out the lip if you need to just to make sure it's fully down in properly and as you come around to here this bit overlaps for weather sealing from the upper part of the weather strip just make sure you drop that in behind lock it in nice and tight behind and then just overlap that piece back over again and there you go all done so that's the end of the installation phase of the smart top um, by the way if you're concerned about whether or not you've got the parts located or not. If you pull off the weather strip from the other side, you can check down the side to see if you've got the, the tabs located, the metal hooks located in the way that you should have. Just a little tip there. But now it's all back together again, all functioning. We've done the functional testing of the system in place with it static. Now we'll move on to actually testing the system um, when we're actually moving with regards to the configuration of operating the roof while we're moving forwards. So we'll move on to that stage next. So we've brought the car to a picturesque location, Bowood, as good as any. Um, nice backdrop here to show you the uh, operations of the module, of the smart top unit. So first of all, I'm going to show you the operations um, that are available if you configure the remote functionality so remember I, I've already config we've already configured the unit with a laptop and within those configuration states you've set whether or not you want the remote control functionality to work so to lower the roof using a remote control from the car being locked you use the unlock button on the remote control now you use the standard remote control you don't need an additional remote control you use the standard 458 remote control so to lower the roof first of all you have to unlock the car and then you have to wait five seconds for the car to initialize and set itself up. That's required before you can actually then input the amount of presses to, to lower the roof. And then you input three button presses on the unlock button within around a second apart, like so. And then the roof will drop down. Now what's happening here is that I've pre-configured the windows so that such that when the roof is lowered, the windows will stay down instead of coming back up again. You can change that in the configuration. That's just my personal taste that I prefer the windows to stay down because whenever we lower the roof, pretty much all the time, we always lower the windows after they've come back up again. But you can set it so as it, the windows go back up, it's up to you. You can change those states in the configuration of the unit. Now to put the roof back up, you first of all lock the car using the lock button on the remote and then what you do is you press um, you wait your five seconds and then you press the lock button three times around a second apart and what happens here is that the, the roof closes and the actual windows go up to make the car secure so it, it's fully secure fully armed with the alarm and roof fully closed the windows will now go up now we also have additional functionality that you configure whereby if you want um, you can use the remote to actually put the windows down and up without actually lowering the roof so here I'll just show you that and, in, and instead of three button presses in effect it's two. So first of all to lower the windows you unlock the car, you wait your five seconds and then two presses about a click apart, about a second apart and then the windows lower. Now to put the windows back up again using remote control you first of all lock the car wait the five seconds and then you press twice on the lock button on the remote control about a second apart and then the windows will go up you get that slight delay because the system's waiting to see if there's going to be another button press for you to operate the roof and there you go so those are the full remote operations that are capable if you switch those items on in the configuration of the unit
So one of the key benefits of using this smart top system is that is the one touch operation when you actually are inside the car and to open and close the roof when you're actually moving the car along. This is one of the key areas of functionality that is missing on the 458 but does exist on the 488 and the F8. But how you actually operate this with the one touch operation now um, when you're moving is, I just might start moving forwards, you actually just touch the button once and you don't have, therefore you don't have to hold the button anymore. The actual roof opens while you're moving along and the windows drop down. And the speed, the maximum speed that you're driving the car at is configurable up to a point. I think it's up to around 40 clicks. And then to actually close the roof again, the one touch while you're driving along The main situations where you're likely to want to operate the roof when you're driving along is um, say for example you're at traffic lights the traffic lights are about to go green and it starts to rain then you've got the roof open you want to close it but you don't want to stop there and wait 14 seconds and hold all the traffic up um, we've had this situation before actually and we've had to hold the traffic up so it's not a great it's not a great situation to be in it's very stressful It'd be a lot easier if you could then operate the roof and then start moving forwards and the roof would continue to operate because as long as you're moving forwards, even though you're going forwards quite slowly, um, you, you de-stress the situation by the car actually moving forwards while you're opening or closing the roof. It just works a hell of a lot better that way. We've configured and installed the unit and we've, we've done some checks and we've checked the operation of the unit and obviously have configured the unit in the way that I want to actually the, op the unit to operate. So what I'm going to do now is um, go through a review of each of those stages. So I'm going to go through the configuration of the unit, the installation of the unit and the operation of the unit. So starting off on the configuration of the unit, pros. It's fairly easy to configure. You've got the, the application that is provided by mods for cars that enables the actual configuration of the unit you can easily select each of the different check boxes in the configuration matrix grid within that application which enables you to select the options quite easily on a laptop uh, you've got the configuration where you can upgrade the firmware um, through the laptop um, obviously this is all done before you install the unit or better done before you install the unit you can do this after you've installed the unit but it's better to configure the unit before you install it it's a lot easier as you saw and i configured it um, on the back of the car so when connecting the smart top unit to your laptop you, you are provisioned the cable um, so you can do the firmware upgrade and you can actually configure the unit without any additional units whatsoever apart from obviously having your application and downloading their their app onto your laptop so that you can configure the unit. Okay, so there are some negatives with this configuration approach. One of the major flaws of the current configuration approach is that when you're presented with the grid in the application to actually configure the unit, there's just generic function names, function one, function two, function three, function four, etc., on the actual grid. Obviously that doesn't explain what the operations perform. So you don't know exactly what function one does, what function two does, etc., etc. So it's very tricky. Within the application, you have a button that you can press, which actually provides you um, the naming of the operations. And that relates obviously the type of car that you've got with the version of the application you're using. So it can overlay the proper operations relative to each of those functions. Now I've mentioned this to mods for cars as the better approach would be for the software to check which version of the smart top you've actually installed. So for which car, so obviously I've got the version installed for the 458 Spider, and it's a generic one for other, other vehicles as well, other variations of Ferrari. Um, so the software should be able to check which version of the smart top unit you've installed to know which operations relate to which functions in the group. Um, and I believe they are actually gonna look at doing that. That is a, an update that they're gonna perform in the future. Now, one of the other negatives as well is that I'm, I'm a technical consultant by what I do. That's how I make my money. I don't make my money creating YouTube videos. So that means that I'm, I'm a techie, so that configuring systems in this manner doesn't phase me. It's quite easy for me to do. For a normal non-techie person, person who might buy a car like this, who's um, 
got the funds and the way with all to actually purchase and own a car like this. Um, they may be running a totally different type of business. They may be non-technical and it, that may phase them configuring the unit. It may phase them just totally having a, a, a black box unit like the smart top unit and con connecting it to a laptop. That in itself could phase somebody, um, let alone updating the firmware on it and let alone actually configuring it through a grid matrix. So that approach may be a bit too techy for a lot of people. Um, also, there is the, the option to configure the unit um, without using a laptop at all. Once you've installed the unit, you can actually um, configure the unit through certain key press approaches with the actual, with the, with the roof operation button. Now on the 458, there's only one roof operation button. That roof operation button, you press it down or away from you to actually close the roof and you pull it open to open the roof. So it's quite logical from that perspective of use of the button. You use that button to configure the unit in an automated way through the actual car interface, using the car's indicators to flash responses with regards to which function you're modifying and what setting you are, you've set for that particular function. And that is very convoluted, but it's not techy from the point of view of connecting a laptop, connecting a lead, et cetera, et cetera. But you would still have to update the firmware on the unit, or you should update the firmware on the unit. My firmware was actually the latest version on the, of, of the unit, so I didn't have to update the firmware, but I, I checked anyway to make sure I had the latest firmware. So the, the positives, if you're, if you've got the knowledge to be able to update the firmware using a connecting a device um, via this USB lead to a laptop, and if you've got the knowledge to, um, to work logically and to configure using the matrix that they provide in the application, then that's quite straightforward. The actual techie version of configuring it is actually quite straightforward. With regards to configuring the unit using the actual um, open and close buttons on the actual hardtop roof, it's just far too complex. And, and I have mentioned this to Mods for Cars as well, and um, we're stating that this is far too complex. And, and there is one operation mode that I do recommend that is performed through the actual interface of the open and close button on the, on the unit through the actual rooftop console button. And that is to enable and disable the unit, which is an operation that is available at the moment, along with the plethora of configuring all the other operations in that manner. So, at the moment, you can actually enable and disable it, but it's quite convoluted in how you would, would enable and disable the unit using the actual open and close button for the roof. I recommend that the actual unit has a very simplistic way of enabling and disabling the unit so, so that um, it's quite easy for uh, the owner of the vehicle to do that. Now, why would you want to disable the unit? Okay, so if the car goes in for a service, um, manufacturer or dealer, whoever, whether it's an independent or whether it's the dealer that is actually servicing your car, they, they grease the roof units on these, on the spider units, they grease certain sections. For example, there's grease that's put into this latching point on the, on the roof and respective um, latches on the actual roof that's embedded at the moment within this top. Um, they grease those parts, they check them for operation, uh, they may adjust the cables and such like during the service. Now, well, that means that they're going to be operating the roof. Now, if you've got it configured to a one-touch operation on the actual console control for opening the roof, then that's going to confuse them. And if they accidentally hold that button for the amount of time that enables it to go into the actual operation mode to configure the operations, to configure the unit, a dealer may go into that mode accidentally by holding the button for too long because they would be expecting the roof to open by holding the button or closing the button. That could send it into a configuration mode and they'll be thinking they'll see the indicators flashing at them and, and, the, and the car beeps at you to let you know you've gone into the configuration mode. Um, and they would be thinking, what the hell's this? They may think that the actual screen unit has failed or that there's some problem there. And they, they may even say to the owner that they need a new module for the, for the screens on the car or or some bizarre problem has gone wrong and it needs to be investigated and incur a massive charge to the owner. So it's a, good, it's a good point to enable the capability to disable and enable the unit through an easy approach through the actual button press as you do. Now, why do you only configure the unit through the actual open and close button? Well, that's because the smart top unit is only sensing that button obviously it it's because it, it it's a module for operating the actual roof opening and closing the roof therefore it would only sense um, and operate and enact on the button presses for opening and closing the roof it's a techie thing regarding the installation the installation was very straightforward you just had to open pull the actual weather shield back for the door um, this 
particular panel here, this trim panel as you saw in the, in the video, in the installation part of the video, you just had a single torque screw that you had to remove to be able to remove this trim. Now with regards to removing the trim, it was tricky. You have to be very careful because these parts are very expensive and this is obviously lever on my car and I think it's lever on most cars anyway, most of these 458s. So that's one of the negative aspects of it, but that's the design of the 458 and that'd be the design of any car. You know, you're gonna have to remove trim parts and you've got to be careful when you do it. So it's not, it's not a negative aspect with regards to the installation of the unit per se. It's just part of the actual process. And also with regards to <clears throat> the actual installation of the physical unit, placement of the unit um, and cabling the unit, the cables are very good quality. They're comparable in quality to the OEM Ferrari wiring loom and Ferrari plugs. The actual quality of the wiring is very good as well. Again, I would say it's comparable to the OEM Ferrari wiring. I mean, I don't know what quality of actual cable they use, but it seems very good quality. It seems comparable. And with regards to actually unplugging and physically plugging in the unit, the actual complexity of that is very straightforward. And the, the final bit that's a, um, a bit tricky with regards to the installation is when you're actually locating the physical smart top unit, you have to actually try and Velcro it in and wedge it in with regards to the actual pre-existing OEM um, module for the operation of the roof. But that isn't very tricky. It's quite straightforward to do. And then of course, re replacement of the trim. So installation is actually very straightforward. My recommendation, which isn't detailed in the documentation is to disconnect the battery first. They don't state that in the documentation. My, recommend, my recommendation though is to disconnect the battery first. Why? Well, because if there is some sort of issue with regards to the cabling in some way, shape or form, or you cross contacts, then you could fry um, one of the units in the car. Um, I don't know that for sure. I'm just saying that it's, it's a good bit of preventative, um, pre it's a good preventative operation just to be on the safe side. So with regards to installing anything electrical, especially on a car like this, I would disable the battery. I'd disengage the battery first of all, install the unit, then re-enable the battery, reconnect the battery which is what I did, as you can see from the installation of this video. Now, with regards to operation, operation very straightforward. You've got the single touch for open and close, makes it a lot easier to actually open and close the roof rather than having to hold it. So obviously that's configurable if you have configured that in the way to operate the unit. With regards to using the remote, well, you could say that's a bit of a gimmick, um, but it is actually quite useful. Now, uses for using the standard re um, remotes for opening and closing the roof are, for me, my knees are shot and my, my hips are shot from all the sports I've done way back. So it's easier for me to get in and out of this car through the actual top by actually putting my, my weight here and actually climbing in in this manner. Now, obviously I couldn't do that if the roof was there. So being able to open the roof first of all to get in the car is a, a very good positive aspect for me. It makes it a lot easier for me to get into the car. I couldn't do that before because with the standard OEM operation of the roof, you've actually got to go into the car, switch ignition on, and then operate the roof. So obviously you're already inside the car, so it doesn't help you get inside the car. So being able to use a remote control to do just that one operation makes it a lot easier for me. So I can open up the garage, use the remote to open up the roof on the car and get in the car that way. Now, we only drive the car in good weather, so 99% of the time, we're gonna have the roof down anyway. So I'm gonna drop the roof, so it doesn't matter if I open the roof before I get in or after, whichever way it works, but it just makes it easier on my joints to get in the car. So that's a big positive. With regards to using the remote, it's a bit of a pain in the backside that you know you have to either open or close the car um, using the central locking system to put it in the mode so it knows whether to open or close the roof but i can understand why that is again it's a techie thing so the system so the smart top unit knows um, whether you're um, going to open the roof or close the roof um, because obviously if the car's open then you're going to want to open the open the roof if it's closed and you're potentially going to want to close the roof but to have to wait five seconds after you perform one of those operations before you then click the button three times is a bit of a pain, but it's only five seconds. It, you know, it's not, a, it's not a deal breaker. So it's um, again, and that's because that's how long it takes for the Ferrari units to initialize after you've opened and closed the unit. So it's again, it's a Ferrari thing, not a smart top thing. So it's, you couldn't say really it's a negative thing about the smart top unit, but it's something that's important to mention about the operation. And then the piece de resistance, which of course is the main reason why people will fit this smart top unit to a 458 Spider or to a Ferrari of this nature, apart from certain cars, um, which um, will not enable this capability, is the ability to actually put the roof up and down um, and in effect operate the roof while you're driving the car, while you're actually moving the car. And you can configure it up to certain speeds to enable you to do that. I think I've got this configured up to seven kilometers or seven miles per hour, but there's various different speed limits you can set it to up to a particular point, of course. 
Um, and that's obviously only operating in the safe mode in, on the flat level, et cetera, et cetera. But the, the benefit that provides when you're at the traffic lights, you know, if it starts raining, you've got the roof down and then you're, you're coming to a traffic light at the moment, um, with the standard, standard OEM operation, you've got to wait there stopped for 14 seconds to operate the roof and you've got to let it fully operate. So it takes 14 seconds for the roof to fully open or fully close. If you're at traffic lights, you'll get, you get terrible anxiety. If it starts pouring down, you've got to close the roof. You either take the hit and you hope that the traffic lights are not going to change in that 14 seconds that you're closing the roof, or you're going to be holding up all the traffic behind you, which I, I, can, I can tell you now, Red Ferraris don't necessarily um, make you a lot of friends anyway in a traffic jam. You know, people, people have a positive reaction, but they also have a negative reaction to them. And it doesn't, you don't make any friends if you're holding people up at the traffic lights while you're operating the roof and trying to close the roof while it's raining. It, uh, it's a lot better if you can at least creep the car forward, move the car forward while you're operating the roof. And that's the key killer functionality of this smart top unit and any any foibles that there are in configuring it um, are overcome totally by that by that that killer capability that killer functionality that this unit provides so if i was going to give you an overall summation of all that information i know i've got well, i know i've waffled on a, a lot sorry about that but you know it's a lot of this information needed to be said configuration can be a bit of a pain in the ass um, but if you're a bit of a techie and you work logically, you can do it no problem. And some of those configuration approaches may be improved in the future. Um, being able to configure the unit for the actual um, roof open close console switch is really far too complex and should only be left for enabling or disabling the unit for, for situations such like when the car's going in for service. And the actual operation of the unit is fantastic, um, you know, no problems whatsoever. Installation, very straightforward, as I've said, um, just fitting the trim in and out, you know, is, is a problem. Um, so installation of the unit is, is very straightforward, very simplistic to do. Just a few tricks, just a, just a few, um, few issues with regards to removing the trim, but that's because it's a 458 and actually pushing the unit in, making sure the unit is secure after you've configured it and wired it. And then the, the operation of the unit is very straightforward, no problems whatsoever. Uh, and the killer, killer benefit of this, as I've said, is the ability to operate the roof while you're moving forwards. So in final summation, big thumbs up, well done mods for cars. It's a great unit and provides um, the, one of the few weaknesses um, that this 458 Spider has is now overcome by this smart top unit. So I recommend this smart top unit um, as long as you're very careful when you operate the unit and very careful in your installation. Um, you know, you have to make, again, make sure you disconnect the battery and make sure you know what you're doing when you're installing it. If you don't, then get an independent person who does know what they're doing to install and configure the unit for you. So as I intimated earlier, in association with the manufacturers of the Smart Top unit, Mods for Cars, I've negotiated a cool discount deal for all the subscribers of my channel. The discount code for that deal and to redeem that deal is called Rich Reviews. Yeah, I know it's quite novel, but it is what it is. So if you pop along to the Mods for Cars website, then pop in that Rich Reviews discount code, you'll get 5% discount on your unit. So we're going to close out the video now. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like some great future content to come. If you like how-tos, then please let me know in the comments. Um, potentially, we're gonna do some more how-tos. It lends itself to the knowledge that I have and my capabilities, I'm a techie, so these sort of technical installations and reviews um, are something that I find actually very, very useful and uh, probably lend towards my technical skills and my capability. If you're not subscribed, please think about subscribing to the channel. As I said, great content to come in the future, a lot more content about the cars, shows, all sorts of different types of events coming forward. Thanks a lot for watching guys and we'll see you in the next video.